because you can't emphasize it enough. He is scoring these points on Michael Cooper, who really took Floyd out of the game. I made the point earlier that Floyd wanted to uh, get even with Michael Cooper for what he has done. And the defense, you can't, you can't second guess that. They have been playing incredible defense, the Warriors have. They're owning the defensive backboards. They're getting them out, going on the break, and they're playing smart basketball. But I'll tell you, the defense has really tightened up. They've got four or five guys going to those defensive boards. They have limited the Lakers to their missed shots by just shutting it down. Lakers have the ball, 118 to play. Magic drives. Cooper right side, chest pass Scott. Scott holds it in the wing, far right side, throws out to a Jabbar. Foul on Joe Barry Carroll. That's his fifth foul of the ball game, which will put Kareem on the free throw line for two. As JV wanted to front that ball, Jim, and took the ball away. He was trying to front, and I'll tell you right now, he could not get around Kareem because of the left arm extended. He was trying to get around there for about three dribbles prior to that. He comes up with a foul, and, and of course, looks like uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wants to win the free throw shooting contest here in the fourth well, he's, quarter. He's made some. He's hit four free throws in the fourth quarter. His second one, like his first one, good. Kareem now has 27. Sleepy Floyd has 29 alone in the fourth quarter. That tells you what kind of game he is having. Now we have a whistle, and George Carl would like a timeout. Wait a minute, George Carl, I don't think wanted a timeout. Ed Rush is now walking over, and I don't think George Carl was calling a timeout. No, he, he's, in fact, he's a little upset with uh, Greg Ballard right now because, not upset, excuse me, disappointed would be the word. He did not want a timeout. There was a little miscommunication between Ballard and George Carl. Well, also, but, but Ed Rush came over, and I think Ed Rush acknowledged what George was doing on the bench. What George was doing, I believe, was instructing his defense where to go following when they come up a floor. He was talking about how he wanted to attack the Lakers, and Ed Rush took it as though George was making a motion that he wanted a timeout. And I believe, I could be wrong, I don't think the Warriors were charged for a timeout on that situation. They were charged for one. All right, what we're going over now is the fact the Warriors have one timeout remaining, and the Lakers also have one timeout remaining. But I don't believe George Carl wanted to call a timeout in that situation. Anyway, we have 104 to play in the ball game as George Carl appeared perplexed on what was going on it may have been as you mentioned a miscommunication between George and Ballard but Ed Rush immediately came over and like he was saying hey I'm sorry that happened yeah. I knew he didn't want the, the call but I called it too late it was yeah he could not reverse the call they were already into the timeout and of course George Carl was giving the old Alfred E. Newman what me all right we have 104 to go in a memorable memorable fourth quarter I don't think anybody in this building will ever forget this and believe me a couple of years from now, there are going to be about 45,000 people in this building to watch this because everybody's going to say, yeah, I was there, but they sleep me floor explored 29 of the fourth quarter. Precisely, Greg. And you know, no matter what the Warriors would do in this series, they have won over the fans this year. They've had an incredible year, 12-game turnaround, and of course, this just sends them back out on the road. Good point. With such uplifting I mean it, this is just unbelievable what Sleepy has done carry this basketball club look at that fourth quarter scoring 37 to 19 and of course Sleepy has what 29 of them Sleepy has 29 of he's, them he's outscored the Lakers by 10 in the quarter he's only missed one shot 12 of 13 from the floor Floyd has the ball to the inbounds exactly a minute to play in the game Floyd now left side drives backs away bounce past Teagle on the far left baseline he's doubled holds it throws it across the court right side Larry up he's fouled he shoots no good He'll shoot two free throws. And the Warriors there took a page, page one, on a Pat Riley's playbook, passing the ball. That was a sensational pass off the double team to Larry. It was a great play, and Terry Teagle had the presence of mind not to force it anywhere because the Lakers were looking to double, double team now. Larry Smith makes his first free throw. Greg, I thought that Larry could have avoided that contact by coming up reverse side rather than bringing his right arm back to the defender, and he makes, he misses the second. Off the front of the rim, rebound, pulled by Worthy, almost JV's board. 126-121, ball into the bounce off of JV. As JV's in that backcourt trying to prevent the Lakers from coming forth, but here they come. 44 seconds to go, the Warriors by five. Cooper drives, one-handed up off the rim out. Rebound, Larry! To Floyd, here comes Sleepy! Over to Teagle, off and he scores a layup! And we'll see you Tuesday for game five! 128-121 Warriors. Scott drives. Don't follow him. Scott blocked by Carroll. Pulled down by JB. Over to Ballard. Give it to Let's Sleepy. Let's all applaud. What a performance by the Warriors. 
Siegel, 15 to play. Give it to Sleepy. Let him get 30. Now we have a whistle. A foul is called. Tuesday, 7.30. We will tip off game five. Back in the forum. And I bet less than half the people in this building thought we tip off game five after they're gonna the subs- first quarter begun. They're going to substitute Moss for yes. Sleepy. To- Sleepy's coming out of the moment here. Teagle's first free throw good. Sleepy is coming off the floor. Listen to this ovation. You talk about a one-man wrecking crew. He didn't even know he come off. He's in a daze. He's supposed to come off the floor. He doesn't even realize. I told you he was unconscious. He doesn't even know the crowd's yelling for him. Well, he looks like he's in an absolute daze. He is so tired. He's ready to play Tuesday right now. Siegel, second free throw, no good. Rebound worthy over to Michael Cooper. The Warriors have beaten the Lakers. Cooper's three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Larry. Five seconds for Ballard. Teagle up and one motion off the good. That would have capped it off in style. And Pat Riley walks off this court knowing he was beaten by an incredibly superhuman effort. Sleepy Floyd and the Warrior team rallied around him in the fourth quarter. It was an unbelievable 29-point fourth quarter, and the Warriors win game four. And they are not swept by the mighty Lakers. There will be a game five Tuesday, 7.30. That is it for our simulcast. Stay tuned for the post-game shows coming up on radio as well as television. And if Sleepy Floyd has any energy, we'll talk to him on both. Our final score, the Warriors 129 and the Lakers 121. We did, in fact, get Sleepy Floyd just minutes after the game ended, and we'll be back with that interview right after these messages. I don't mind working hard, but I'll tell you how I feel. I work an honest day, and I want an honest deal. Nobody likes high food prices. So when so many hard-working folks shop at Safeway week after week, you know we got to be giving you an honest deal. I work an honest day, and I want an honest deal. Safeway, when you get an honest deal every day. Attention all Bronson backers. TV 36 presents an incredible Charles Bronson Bonanza. Five hard-hitting action films especially made to prove once and for all that Charles is in charge. They killed his wife and daughter. Paul Kersey's moved to L.A., but he can't run from the punks. So he's forced into the streets again, looking for sweet revenge. Wednesday night at 8, Bronson's back in Death Wish 2. It's a Bronson Bonanza. Five exciting Charles Bronson classics. Weeknights at 8 on the Super Movie. Here on TV 36. When I played hoops, I could beat anybody. Still can. Yo, chief, little one-on-one or what? Get out of town, man. Chicken! At least I can enjoy a Miller Lite while I'm looking for a game, right? How about you, peanut? Uh, wimp. Light tastes great, but these bean poles probably drink it because it's less filling. Hey, yo, bean pole, do you want to show me what you got? <laughs> Tricks are easy. I'd like to get this turkey on the court. It's no contest. There's only one light beer, Miller Lite. 29 points in the fourth quarter, 39 in the second half, 18 of 26 shooting for the game, 15 out of 17 in the second half alone. And he had time enough during that game to dish out 10 assists. Here now with Sleepy Floyd is Jim Barnett. Sleepy Floyd, I'm not sure you're aware of it because I know you can't count the number of points when you're that hot. Are you cognizant that he finished with 51 points? No, I wasn't conscious of anything at that point. I was just going to the bucket and uh, either try to get the layup or the foul and... We made some great plays down the stretch. JB hit outside jumper. Uh, Larry had made two big uh, free throws, so it was a great team effort. Let me enlighten you a little on television. You scored 10 points in the third quarter, Sleepy. In the fourth quarter, you missed your first shot. You went on to score 12 straight field goals, coupled with five free throws. You had 29 points in the fourth quarter alone. That is a new NBA playoff record. Set Isaiah Thomas 25 points just a few nights ago. You now own that record. 
you outscored the entire Lakers squad in the fourth quarter. And as I said on the air, you were unconscious. That's what it's like when you're playing in that realm. Yeah, you know, I was just going to the bucket. The jumper was hitting from the outside. The penetration was there. You know, the floor just looked so wide open for the first time in the series. And, you know, I had that leg problem, that poor hamstring. And I just had to forget about it and go for it. Can you share with our viewers what it's like when you're in that other zone where you know things are going to go for you? You, you? you get greedy. You get greedy, you want the next one, and you want the next one just, much, just that much more, and that's the way I felt. Were you aware that Michael Cooper was the man that was defending you? You went around him so many times like he was standing still. I wasn't aware who was on me. All I could see was a blank face, and I was going to the bucket. That's the answer I wanted because I know how that feels in some short way. Right. But your team also played incredible defense, and you were particularly sleepy. I cannot believe the stamina that you had in that fourth quarter because you were going both ends of the court. It takes an incredible amount of energy to score, but you were also getting back making some steals, and your whole team gathered around that. Yeah, you know, the drilling was flowing. We were scrumming all around the court. We took them out of the offense. We did a lot of doubling all around the court, and uh, we just felt good, and it's a great win. I'm happy for our team. A lot of people counted you out, of course. Now you go back to L.A. It's an uphill struggle, but you could at least say they did not sweep the series, and you're just going to take... I, t I talked about the top of the game one day at a time. It's a new ball game. Now you go down Tuesday and you just play. You go one game at a time and hey, the Warriors not out of this yet. So with yesterday's win, the Warriors get a return trip to Los Angeles for a 7.30 game. Brought to you in part.